Hello, everybody. Darren Cross here. Welcome to week nine. This week, we're talking about simple interest. Simple interest is extremely relevant in your life. And so uh, you'll see that a lot of these things, if you have not experienced this stuff already, you will experience it in the future. And uh, this kind of sets the tone for some other things that we're that we're uh, going to be doing um in the future as well so in order to get started let's talk about um some terms here so we have maturity value principle and interest when we think of maturity value what we're saying is if you were this this is when you look at the examples that we're going to do they don't really make sense for this definition right so maturity value is uh coming from a different perspective than the examples we're going to use Maturity value is what is the value of this loan going to be when it matures, right? And it really means that when you take the principle, think about an investment. If I invest something and then I make interest on it, the maturity value is going to be that principle plus the interest, all right? So the maturity value of a loan really is how much do we end up paying for that loan, right? So the maturity value equals the principle, which is the amount we borrowed, and the interest, which is the amount we have to pay for that loan. So the amount of the loan is the principal. Uh, the cost of the money is the interest. This is how banks make money. They actually, um, we put money in the bank and then they loan it to people at a cost and they get that extra money. Um, they're doing it at such a high volume that they really make tons and tons of money. So when we add up the amount of the loan that we originally borrowed, that's always gonna stay the same or be lower, right? So the, the amount of the loan, if I borrow $10,000, it's never gonna be 11,000. If it's higher than the amount I borrowed, that's interest and charges and fees or something like that. So that 10,000 is only gonna be the amount we borrowed and it's going to come down from there, okay? So when we look at the um, this formula, hold on, let's go back here. This formula, the maturity value equals the amount I borrowed plus the amount that I end up paying for that money, right? So the, the cost of that money, all right? So this is another formula that's extremely important. Um, and they're adding some other things in here that kind of mean the same thing. So simple interest or interest, the amount of the interest is equal to the amount that we borrowed, the principal, the rate, the interest rate, the rate at which we borrowed it, and then the time, and this time is expressed in years, right? So this rate is as a percent, but when we do the math, we're gonna convert it to a decimal, right? So if it says 10%, it's we're gonna do the math, move the decimal point, and it's gonna be 0 0.10, right? Um, and then the time is gonna be stated in years. So if this says one, then this is one year. If it says two, it's two years. Most of the time though, we're gonna see for our problems, we're gonna see fractions because it's gonna be some uh, portion of a year. And it's usually gonna be uh, some fraction out of 12, right? So if you see here, this is um, this is a prop, they're, they're actually showing the problem here. So interest equals principal times rate times time. So 40,000 times the rate, this is 4% times time, six over 12, this is saying, six out of 12, it's six of the 12 months, okay? So it's expressed in years, or it's stated in years, but it's expressed often in a fraction. And we're gonna see later when we're talking about daily interest, it'll be out of 365 or 360, which don't freak out, I'll tell you what that means here in a little bit. But this is this is actually, um, this is half of a year, right? <clears throat> So here's what I want you to do. Whenever you see these fractions in the problem, um, or if someone, if, if the problem is saying eight months, then you know that it's eight months out of 12 because it's eight months out of the year. 12 months is a year. And what I want you to do is get used to working this backwards, okay, on your calculator. Um, and what you do is just do six divided by 12, don't even stop, times 0 0.04 times 40,000. So if you do that on your calculator, six divided by 12 times 0 0.04 times 40,000, just work it backwards, you'll actually get this 800. The reason why I want you to work it backwards is so that you can do this without having to write it down or anything like that. You could just, you could just do it in one fluid motion, okay? So the interest 
is 800. So let's go back here. The interest amount is 800. So when we look at this, this is 800. And the principal was 40,000. So the maturity value after a year is 40,800, okay? I guess we should have looked at that first. <laughs> um, they they put these things in here and then they, they put the example. So I'll be sure to, to actually uh, flesh it out before we go in it. But this is actually the problem that we had here, right? So it was loaned for six months out of the year, six months out of the year, okay? Um, everything is expressed in a year. So this is six out of 12, 12 months make a year, right? So then they're asking, what's the interest and maturity value? What's the amount of the interest? Well, the interest formula is principal times rate times time. And then the other formula is maturity value is principal plus interest, right? So 40, 40,000 plus this interest is 40,800. Okay, so let's look at this. Hope borrowed $40,000. The loan was for one year at the rate of 4%. What is Hope's interest and maturity value? Now, this is one instead of six over 12. You could say 12 over 12, right? But that's one, right? So you don't have to work it backwards, but you can. One times 0 0.04 times 40,000 is 1,600. The interest is sixteen hundred. They're saying, "What's the interest and maturity value?" Well, the interest is sixteen hundred, and the maturity value is the amount she originally borrowed and the sixteen hundred. So forty-one six. Okay. So let's look at this problem. Hope borrowed forty thousand dollars. The loan was for eighteen months at a rate of four percent. What was Hope's interest and maturity value so it's 18 months but it's still stated in years and to clarify it's stated in its relationship to one year right um if it's a fraction we still this must always be 12. if it's talking about daily interest this must all always be 365 or 360 depending upon the type of problem that we're doing but this denominator is always going to be 12. but it's 18 out of the 12 months Right, so when you divide that, it's gonna be a year and a half, but you don't have to do it that way. You could just do it like I was saying before, 18 divided by 12 times 0 0.04 times 40,000, and that equals 2,400. So her interest is 2,400. They're asking for the interest and the maturity value, which is the, the principal and the interest is 40,000 or 42,400. So 40,000 plus this 2,400. Okay. Now, so um, when we're when we are trying to calculate exact interest, exact interest, what we're saying is we want to calculate it to the day. Okay. Then we have to use a daily. You're you're using 365 days as our base. So instead of going out of 12, we're saying how many days did we actually have this money borrowed, okay? So you look at the exact number of days that we had the money borrowed over 365, and that's gonna go back into that formula, P times R times T, but T is gonna be the number of days, the exact number of days that we had borrowed over 365, right? So if you look at this, on March 4th, Joe Bench borrowed $50,000 at 5%. The interest and principal are due on July 6th. What are the interest costs and the maturity value? Okay, so we need to figure out the interest. The interest is going to be P times R times T. And T, if you count from March 4th to the end, so March 4th to the end of March, and then all of April, and then all of June, or all of May, and then all of June, and then up to July 6th. And the way to do this is um, I always use my knuckles here. So if you go to figure out how many days are in a month, you go January, February, or go like knuckle underneath, knuckle underneath, like the knuckle groove, knuckle groove, knuckle groove, knuckle, all right? 
So January, February, March, April in the groove, May, June in the groove, July, then start over, August, September, October, November, December. Everything that's on a knuckle is 31 days. Everything that's in the groove is less than 31 days. So when you look at March 4th to March, how many is that? January, February, March, that's 31 days. So March 4th to 31 is, what is that? Uh, 27, 27 days. And then 27, April has 30 because it's in the groove, right? So 27 plus 30. And then uh, May has 31. So 27 plus 30 plus 31. June has 30. So 27 plus 30 plus 31 plus 30. Um, I'm losing count here. So 27 plus 30 is 57 plus 31 is 88 plus 30 is 128 or 118. And then plus six, because it's on July 6th, you only go to those six days. So 118 plus six days is 124. So yeah, so 124 out of 365. Now you just work it like we did before. 124 divided by 365 times 0 0.05 times 50,000. The interest for that 124 days is going to be 849. So when they pay this back, after this 124 days, they're going to pay back this 849 plus the amount that they borrowed. So that's going to be 50,000 plus 849. Exact interest. Now, Um, when we're using ordinary interest, this is using the, the banker's rule. Bankers say, well, you know, it's just easy just to assume that every, that every month is 30 days. So we'll just base it on 30 days or 360 days a year and not 365. But you're still counting the exact days. We're still going to have to count the exact days, but we're going to base it on, um, 360 instead of 365. What's the value of that? It ends up being extra interest for them. So that's just um, that's just a thing. Just understand it. If we're looking at the uh, Baker's Rule, then we're going to use 360 instead of 365, but we're still going to count those days, right? So on March 4th, uh, Joe borrowed 50000 at 5%. It's still due on July 6th, same 124 days, but this time it's due, it's, um, wait a minute. Oh, I was going to say, it looked like, it looked like this was actually less. Um, this time it's going to be based out of, th based, uh, out of 360 days. We're just saying, hey, just say 30 days times 12. That, that's just easy. Well, what it ends up being is, if you work it out, 124 divided by 360 times 0 0.05 times 50,000, 86111 is the amount of the interest. So you've got to pay that back plus the original $50,000. So you pay 50861 back, okay? Here's the deal. You end up paying more interest using that banker's rule, right? That's why it's their, their rule. They like that, okay? But... Um, you'll have the instructions on which way you're going to go here, okay? Okay, so um, what are they saying here? Two methods of calculating simple interest and maturity value. So are they saying, okay, so if we're, we're going to look at both of these based upon uh, this problem based upon both ways, right? So May 4th, Don Crystal borrowed $15,000 at 8%. Interest and principal are due on August 10th. So you got May, June, July, August. So May is 31 days. How many days do you have left? 31, 31 days in May, uh, 27, plus the 30 days in June, plus 31 days in July, plus the 10 days in August. So that's 98 days total. And we when we use the exact interest method, 98 divided by 365 times 0.08 times 15,000, your, your interest is 322, and so you're going to have to pay back that 15,000 plus the 322. And if we do it on same 98 days based upon uh, the banker's rule, ordinary interest, then this is end up this ends up being 326. So it's more interest, right? 
So you have to pay back 15,326. Again, you will, um, your problem should tell should ask you for the method that they want you to use. Now, finding the unknown um, in a simple interest formula, and this is talking about principal. Here's the thing to note. Whatever you're looking for is going to be, so you have principal, rate, and time, right? Interest, if you go back to that formula, let's see here. Let me go back. Interest equals principal times rate times time. So here's the thing. Whatever you're looking for is going to be equal to interest divided by the other two. So if you don't, if you're looking for the principal, then principal equals interest divided by rate times time. If you're looking for the rate, then inch, then uh, rate equals interest divided by principal times time. If you're looking for time, then interest equals, or uh, time equals interest divided by principal times time. Let me show you what I mean. So right here, it's PRT, right? And right here, we're looking for principal. So principal equals interest. Interest is always in the numerator divided by the other two, rate times time, right? So Jim pay or Tim Jarvis paid uh, the bank 1948 in interest. So we know what the interest is at a rate of 9.5% for 90 days, right? And how much, how, we want to know how much did uh, Tim actually borrow, right? Now, remember, and they're saying use the ordinary interest method. So ordinary interest means uh, out of 360 days, 360 days. Remember, this time is always based upon one year. And we're talking about daily interest. So we're going, this is going to be the number of days. We're talking about how many days, right? Um, so this is 90 days out of how many? Well, they say ordinary interest, so 360. So you got to do that math too. So now there's no real way to do this on your calculator except to write it down. So 90 times 360, right? So point, point, um, nine, oh, point 0.95 times 90 divided by 60. Keep this answer there. And then you're going to divide 1948 by that. So the amount is 820. What are we saying? 820 is the principal. So that's how much they borrowed. So again, Whatever you're looking for, it's interest divided by the other two. So Jim, Tim Jarvis brought eight hundred and or eight eight hundred and twenty dollars and twenty one cents from a bank. The interest is nineteen forty eight for ninety days. What rate of interest did Tim pay for using? And you're going to use the ordinary interest method. So. This is saying rate of interest, not interest. What rate of interest? So we're looking for rate. And rate equals the amount of interest divided by the other two multiplied by each other, right? So principal times time. 8, 20, 21 times 90 out of 360, right? So 90 out of 360 times 821. And then 1948 divided by that. The rate is 9.5. So when we do the final one, we're looking for time, then it's interest divided by principal times rate. We don't have to do that fraction here. So same same deal, he borrowed 8, 20, 21. The interest is 1948. The amount is always gonna go here uh, for 90 days. Uh, Wait a minute. I think they messed up here. They're supposed to be, you're supposed to be trying to find. Oh, they didn't put, they didn't put it here. This is just weird. It's, if you have it for 90 days, then that is actually what it is. But um, they didn't, they didn't tell you the rate. This is a bad problem. They're supposed to tell you the rate. And that's what you would do here, right? They gave you the 90 days, but they should have been, uh, they should have given you the rate here. So pretend like this isn't here and the rate is 0 0.095. Then you multiply 820 times 0 0.095, 25, or 
And then if you multiply that times the 360, you get that 90 days. Ordinary interest. If it's exact interest, we go 365. If it's ordinary, that's the U.S. or the banker's rule, then it's going to be out of 360. Okay, so what happens when you make a partial uh, a partial payment before the note is due? Here's the thing to understand. You all, whenever you're making a payment, you are always paying for the amount of interest that's due first. So you're paying interest up to that point first, and then the rest can be applied to principal to reduce the amount that you owe, right? So any partial loan payment first covers any interest that is built up. The remainder can go to that loan principal. So let's look at this. Jeff owes $5,000 on a 4% on a 90-day note. On day 50, so here's the deal. It's a 90-day note, but on day 50, which means 50 days later, he, um, he made a payment. He pays $600 on the note, okay? On day 80, he made another $800 payment or $800 payment. And we're assuming a 360 day year. What's Jeff's adjusted balance after day 50 and after day 80? So we start with that $5,000. We, we need to do, um, we're trying to figure out how much interest is owed because whenever he makes this payment, the $600 payment is not gonna be subtracted from here. It's not gonna be, he's not gonna owe $4,400. Out of this 600, he has to pay 50 days of interest first and once he pays the 50 days of interest then the amount that's left over will go to reduce the amount of this loan right then you're going to do the same thing on day 80 which is 30 days later we got to keep that right in our head because this is going to be oh 50 days of interest but going from day 50 to day 80 is only 30 days interest right it's 30 days later so he makes that extra payment. So we want to figure out what's the adjusted balance after day 50 and after day 80. And then what's the ending balance due? Okay. So calculate the interest. Calculate the interest on principal from the date of the loan to the date of the first principal payment. So the date of the loan uh, is, we don't have a specific date, but we know that it's a 90 day note, but we know it's 50 days. 50 out of how many? Um... 360. So that's what our, that's when we do our PRT, it's going to be 50 out of 360, right? So principal rate time. So this is the amount of interest that's due on day 50. He's had this money borrowed for 50 days. So he owes 2778. So he makes a payment of $600, but here's the thing. That whole $600 is not reducing the amount of this loan. He first has to pay this. So you subtract this interest, that pays the interest, and this is how much principal actually reduces the amount of this loan. So 5,000 minus this 572.22, and so the balance after that is 4427.78. Now, we're still going. Now, on day 80, he makes another payment of $800. But here's the thing. How much? How many days later is that? It's not 80 out of 360, right? It's, it's 30 days later. So there's only another 30 days of, of payments, right? So 30 out of 360. You take the balance that we had after that first payment times the rate. And you can work this backwards as well, right? 30 divided by 360 times 0 0.04 times 442778. This is the amount of interest for the um, next 30 days. So he made that $800 payment. You don't just take 800 from here. You have to pay your interest first, and then you take what's left. So 800 minus, the, minus this interest leaves 785. So 785 comes away from this balance, right? So 785 comes away from this balance. It leaves you with 3642. Now, he made a payment on day 50 and he made a payment on day 80. But this is a 90-day loan. So he still has 10 days of interest left on this loan. So now you got to figure out what the interest is for the rest of the loan, right? And it's based upon 
the balance. So the principal balance is 36.42. We made those two payments and it's down to 36.42. And if we can work this backwards, 10 divided by 360 times 0 0.04 times 36.42.54 is $4. So now what you have to do, since this is the balance that's due, we didn't say we're making a payment. We're just saying we owe this balance and we owe this interest. So now you have to add this interest to the balance. And that's how much you have, that's the total balance due at the end of this note. Cause we didn't, we only made two payments, right? We made the $500 payment and we made the $800 payment. So this was our balance, but we still have to add the rest of the interest to this balance. Okay. So I know a lot of stuff there, just work through the problems. And as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to, um, to reach out to me. I can help you work through it. Good luck, everybody.